I feel as though my powers are almost at their peak. The souls within me burn with a dreadful fire that threatens to consume me. I must exercise the utmost care from here on in, or find myself succumbing to Asylum's dark allure. Now, please don't be too candy cane cheerful there, Michaels. You must have think we're in a Tim Burton movie or something. I don't, I don't know what the accent is either. Hey guys, now this is the start of the new set. New area for a new set, of course. No sideways jumping there, Michael. I'm assuming the boys and girls are very, very impressed. For some reason, your tattoos are suddenly very stable and not flickering in and out of existence anymore. Ow, you. Note to self memorize the controls before you start playing. That sort of thing usually helps. Should have done a bit more playing around before I walk into the loading zone, really, shouldn't I? Uh, no one else, just you. That seems rather pointless. You know, I do say so myself. Got it. Used to all the movement and the awkward tank controls again. I used to putting my gun away as well. Uh, case in point, just in case I don't make this jump, at least I can grab the ledge, you know? I grab the ledge one-handed, but, you know. I think you climb slightly... Yeah, you do. You climb slightly faster if you've got both hands free. Which makes sense, when you think about it. Now, this would be intimidating if it weren't for that we could walk on red hot coals. The area we're in today is the Lava Ducks, if I remember correctly. Now, the Lava Ducks isn't a particularly challenging section in and of itself. It's mostly a lot of jumping puzzles, although there are some rather nasty ambush sections where you get like hit with six or seven guys at once. Um, they give you quite a lot of room to back up and such, so even then, it's not particularly challenging. Please, I've got a level 7 shadow gun, I should. Yeah, there you go. Takes all three and a half shots to take out a sniper dude to. Oh, fuck. I remember there's a delay before you start tracking as well. You should keep that in mind, shouldn't I? I get his stuff before. Nope. Oh, God damn it. He went fast enough, Mike. Glad this guy saw it instead. Tastes of elderberries. I just don't know what they taste like. I know you can make wine from them. You can make wine from most berries. I don't know what it actually tastes like in and of themselves, though. Hmm. It's like mole buddies. I know they use the leaves of those to feed silkworms. All these are more pointless facts brought to you to courtesy of the Lizzo channel. Surprise! You know, it does occur that not a single one of these guys seems even vaguely surprised by the fact that a man walking effortlessly across red hot coals is firing wraiths of death and destruction at them. It doesn't pose even the slightest of hesitations in their actions when they notice this, you know? No, whatever. Yeah, this little zone, um, as the name may imply, is full of lava. Not just red hot coals. And obviously, since we can't actually swim in lava yet, because we don't have the gad, maybe we're wondering yourselves, so, oh, why the crap are we even here? Uh, to which I respond, much like every other area in this game, there are several dark souls you can get without actually requiring the ability to swim in, well, lava in this case. Just as there's plenty of areas in the game that we could get to without being able to touch fire. Or without being able to walk on hot coals. Uh, open the door. This will backtrack into the level like this. Help us get to some things we couldn't normally get at, you know? Let's go over the stage. Within... Yeah, it's under five minutes. That's not bad. Not bad at all. As you get further into the game, your, your pace increases quite rapidly. There's um, less and less obstacles actually act like obstacles if you take my meaning. Speaking of which. Wow. Yeah, she's got like a wrestler's mask on. That's hardcore. Macho chainsaw. Nah, oh fuck. Right, you guys can come through the doors, can't you? There's lots of you. Jack Black wouldn't be impressed, I'm just saying. Just so you know, bruh. Just so you know. You fucking die already. There we go. A long takes to kill the pissing chainsaw guys, and this is a perfect example of the ambushes I was talking about as well. I think it's slightly jaded to the whole thing because I'm not particularly panicked by any of this. Getting better at moving while in strafing mode as well, which really, really helps. Okay. There we go. As long as it's just you. Wow, you hit me without even looking at me. That's impressive. Or a badly coded hitbox, you know. Potato potato at this point. Oops. I didn't actually mean to do that, but it worked out marvelously. What's the matter, son? Too hot for you? Too spicy? Yeah. 
seemed to have found a fatal flaw in Legion's conditioning of his soldiers. He hasn't taught them how to shoot downward. It's fine as long as everyone always comes at you from the same elevation, but the first time you're in an immortal army encounters a hill, you're screwed. You can't hit people like that. You know what? That everyone? Anyone else want to go if they think they're hard enough? Anyone else want a Barney? Yeah, a lot of rooms with glass in um in this section as well as I remember. Sort of teases you with all these dark doors you can see but can't get to. You know, at least not right away anyhow. There are, which is at least there's at least I want to say two. I don't know if that one we just got counts. There are at least two that you have to be able to walk on hot coals to get to. I know that. And obviously, as the name implies, this being the lava ducks. Hey there. There are several you have to be able to swim in lava. Again. So even as I say this, I, I really can't even remember where the hell you get the, um... I can't remember what the gad is called. That doesn't, you know, bode particularly well. I can't remember how the hell you get the gad that lets you swim in lava. It's been so long since I did the end of this game. I've played sort of up to this general... Ah, teleport point. I've played up to this sort of general point quite a lot. I don't know if you can see it over there, but like, um, it's clearly like little underwater channels in the lava. Which obviously we can't get to. Which means there are several dark souls and or areas we can't get to yet. But we can, thanks to the march again, backtrack through the level, like so, and shoot people in the face. Which I find is always a uh, marvelous way to progress. In video games, at least anyhow. Not usually so much in life. In life it tends to be frowned on. Unless you're in London. In which case, it's uh, no hold bars to whatever the fuck you fancy, apparently. That's right. Come for the gaming, stay for the social commentary. Is there any point to this? I think this is just an, an alternate way of getting into this little bit of the level, isn't it? Because if you can't walk on hot coals, let me just check I'm right. By the way, uh, leap of faith! Yeah, yeah, pretty sure this is. You're supposed to walk all the way around the edge, um, yeah. Normally you jump up onto those moving platforms you can see down below us. Walk around the edge, make that jump. Go for everything you've just seen, find the dark so you can't get to yet, because you can't walk on coals, like so. <laughs> and then you sort of meander around the level. There are a, there's definitely a couple of dark souls you don't need any special powers. Other than, you know, the ability to actually unlock the coffin gate that leads you here. To get to. There are very few areas of this game where you have to have special abilities to get to the areas themselves. It's technically speaking possible to gain enough Dark Souls without ever upgrading yourself, in terms of gags and such. To get to almost every area of the game, I'm reasonably certain. Hence why there are places where there are Dark Souls you can get to that don't require special abilities of any sort. It's a bit of balancing on the game designer's behalf to ensure that, in theory, you should be able to go anywhere you want, you know, with a bit of work without acquiring, you know, special abilities and the like. I have no idea what this machine is. I don't know if turning it on is a good or a bad thing. All considering, my money's on bad. But yeah, apparently Mike... Mike gives no shits. Turning on giant machinery of diabolical evil since... 1993? 7? Whenever this game was made, basically. I'll attempt to see if there's been any sort of ports of the sequel or anything. You know, I never actually played the sequel, but hang on, I played the demo of the sequel for about 20 minutes. I can't remember if I enjoyed it or not. Is that a good or a bad thing? I don't remember the demo I played. Yes, it probably means it wasn't bad per se, but it also means it wasn't good enough to make an imprint. Then again, as people have pointed out to me, demos are a rather... They're a faulty dichotomy in and of themselves. They create expectations and such. But, uh, but they can harm a game in more ways than you expect. Even if they're positive expectations, they can still harm the game you're trying to produce. He's lost his shield. Ah. I'll use the hold of a man's face in front of me. That one's dead, my god. I should probably save at some point. I've just been charging blindly through this level, waffling to you all. All that voodoo power that I never use. You know, this strikes me as all like the Dead Space Syndrome, actually. Of course, this was way before Dead Space. The idea that once you've got a certain weapon, 
properly upgraded. In this case, in both cases, actually, you're a starter weapon. There's no reason to ever use anything else. It's like in Dead Space, once I'd upgraded the plasma cutter. The only reason I used the other weapons was to show... Well, to show them off to you guys, show you what they did. I didn't use them because I found them useful or, you know, particularly noteworthy. Which is literally a case of... They, uh... I want to show you guys the spectacle. I know some people get bored if you just run through the game using only one tactic. Something you can get away with doing when you're playing by yourself, but when you play with an audience in mind, folks uh, tend to take umbrage of a sort. Time some puzzling platforming. Hopefully when I get the timing right. Leap of... Ooh, Jesus. He says almost missing the platform. This mile-wide platform. I can go. Right, time to strafe like a motherfucker. What you got, bruh? What you got? What you got? What you got? Well, you and your Star Wars gun didn't save you. Mine! Hmm, dead jacks. Yeah, I'm almost halfway to yet another uh, chunk of health bar if I wanted. There's no reason not to take them. Yeah, your tattoos are really, really stable today. Not glitching in and out of your body. You know, it's sort of weird. The the game never runs exactly the same way twice. It depends on what I've got running in the background, um, general CPU usage, um, how much RAM I've got free, and such. Sometimes, even with all those sort of hardware settings exactly the same, the software will never run in exactly the same manner twice. Kind of interesting, you know, in a weird kind of a way. Yes, blood, blood, blood. You shot me, didn't you? You bastard. Is that delay before you actually start strafing? No, whatever. Hey there, shot your friend. Hope you're not mad. Level 7. Did I not mention that? Terribly sorry. Eat it to the face, son. Yeah, I'm off this. Oh, I'm stuck. My arm was actually stuck inside the grating. That'd be a marvelous bit of realism if we actually intended. Of course it wasn't. The grating, despite having the holes in it, is actually meant to be a solid object in this era of game. Well, perhaps not meant to be, but usually coded as such. The fact you can see through parts of it is merely an illusion. There is no actual permeability. I'm not sure of the wisdom of making the aqueducts out of wood. It doesn't seem like a particularly bold... well, it's a bold idea. Not necessarily a good one. Ah, fuck. Run away! Run away! Seriously, fuck chainsaw guys. Come on, got a present for you. What are you waiting for? What are you, some kind of a coward? Aren't he is? My god. Leatherface would be embarrassed to know you, mate. Blam, blam. No, just once. Just once. I'd, I'd like for all my upgrades to actually count for something, you know? There you go. Eat it to the face, son. These bigger power-ups, it still takes far too long to kill these guys. Especially en masse, you know. A battle can take like two minutes, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have to do a lot of ambush points and such, when stuff keeps respawning as well, that's when it really gets on your nerves, you know. Ah, oh, fuck, missed entirely. Well, I say missed, the lock-on decided to turn itself off. Which is my... It's really my only bugbear with the combat system in this game. I know I've mentioned that combat tends to take quite a while, but... Even that in and of itself isn't that much of a problem. I mean, I play Dark Souls and Demon Souls. Combat in those games takes fucking forever. You know, unless you're ridiculously over level, anyhow. Blood. Blood! Yes, yes, yes. I'm sure I remember that when you get to the high levels, the rate that you're firing these guys is supposed to be able to attack multiple opponents. Again, perhaps that was just on the N64 version. Perhaps it was never actually an intended feature, just one that sort of happened. Perhaps it's just my memory. I don't remember things particularly well at the best of times, let alone memories of when I was a child. Hmm. There's a trick for getting that go view without having to open the door up top there, I know there is. It's got something to do with one of these barrels, I think? 
You can use it to get a bit of extra height. Or is it the flesh lump? It might be the flesh lump. <clears throat> it's one of the things you can stand on top of, is what I'm saying. It gives you just enough extra height, no? Perhaps it's not that, after all. Perhaps it is the barrels. Uh, can I... Nope, not by a long shot. Again, it might be a difference, because I mean, all the areas are slightly smaller and such in the N64 version. It might be that that little arena is small enough that you can make that jump. That's what I'm remembering, maybe. See, I don't remember the lava ducks much at all. They didn't make that much of an impression on me. So either they weren't too difficult, or I've just numbed to the horrors of the game by that point. I didn't particularly notice. Either either, you know, possible. Ooh, fuck. I hear chainsaws. So I'm going to take advantage of being able to go onto different elevations. Here's something I miss from older games. Being able to outreach your enemies by standing on a ledge, that sort of thing, you know? Or it's something you can do in modern games, where enemies tend to climb up after you. Or worse. Can I lock onto you? Would like the lock on to work, but... <sighs> Oh fuck. Well, I didn't mean to do that, but... No, oh, whatever. I'm going to be particularly challenging to take you down. Just keep charging... Unless you keep doing that. The hitbox of your attack must be like a cone in front of you, rather than actually following the line of the chainsaw. What's that? It follows slightly behind you as well, so it's attached to the arm. It is linked to the animation somehow. Just not within the area you'd actually expect. Hmm. Excited there, Michael. Do a wee river dance. Just to, uh... Celebrate the victory. This is not an RPG, Michael. We don't need that shit, you know? Not now, not ever. Speaking of which... This is the most tedious of the old-fashioned style of platforming. Jumping to lots of narrow platforms across a ledge that instantly causes you to slide with no recovery animation. So if I bugger this up, which is fairly certain, he says, hoping he's just being self-depreciating and not prophetic, then I'm gonna go... fuck. Well, that wasn't too bad. Not too bad, I've only got halfway down, that's not too much... Fuck! Fine. Okay. Try number six. Oh, it's the legend! The man, the myth, the editing that will make it seem like great justice. He can jump up the... Michael, please. Thank you. Nah, dodging blades like a pro. Just call me Mr. Gillette. It was a close shave. But not quite there, you know? Run! Ah, oh, fuck. I remember, the hitbox is not where the physical animation is. Think of it like you're playing Dark Souls again. There we go. Not gonna bother jumping to the hard one, because fuck am I doing this all over again? Uh, although I'm gonna save, I think. Yeah. Different routes. If it does what it did like in like the main body of the asylum, where it could like drop you back down into a, you know a random area of the game for no particular reason, I wanna be able to reload the save, you know, rather than have to walk all the way around. Or worse yet, do that jumping puzzle all over again. Case in point, really. Uh, da -da -da. Seems to be no point to this room at all. Just several different drop load, drop down locations. Aha! Right. Okay. I can reach a govy by dropping down on top of these crates that presumably I couldn't get to the top of any other way. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Make sure I'm just. Hmm. That's a little bit to the side. Yeah, that should do it. Still almost missed. Why is my sense of 3D spatial awareness just absolute crap when trying to play this game? Yeah, hey there. How's it going? Getting the lock on decided not to work, so I'll try and shoot you in first person mode. Wait, wait, you can't climb. You can't follow me like that. Where are you going? Unless you're just running away in general, which, you know, it's definitely an option. Makes my life easier. That feels weird, you know? Them being the ones to run away instead of me. Hmm. Speaking of weird, um, I recently bought a little sort of puzzle story game. 
uh, called Mount Montague. Set on um, sort of an Irish island kind of thing. Uh, so these are oldie worldy type settlements, people will try to get back to their roots, blah blah blah. There's been some sort of a plague there that's wiped out most of the inhabitants. You are playing as a... I mean, it's not entirely certain actually, whether you're just playing as a random survivor, whether you're actually playing as the guy who's um, sort of diary scrapped and such you find. A lot of the story is um, about life on the island, both before and after the plague. <clears throat> How this particular chap handled it, the um, things that happened with him and his family during the whole course of the thing. And there's a lot of puzzles to solve. It's not really your standard fare. I mean, there are sort of standard adventure puzzle kind of things. Find item A, put it in slot B, that sort of thing. There's also like sections where you're required to um, decode a... Uh, a Morse code message that someone's hardwired into a, um, a land boy <clears throat> in order to solve yet another puzzle. So you solve one puzzle in order to get the solution to another. A puzzle you can't solve until you've found all the necessary items as well. So it's like layers within layers. It's not just simple find item A, put it in slot B, job done. There's actual put there are actual puzzles involved in the puzzles rather than just you know glorified fetch quests. Uh, I quite like it. I'm not going to record it because the game is very very slow. Um, your character moves a crawl. If I'm perfectly honest, he's really he's in no hurry. And there's a lot of cases where it's very very easy to um, overlook things. For example, I found um, what was it now? It was a combination for us. Oh, what? Ah, one sec. Let me cut this out. It's a long trek, you know. And teleport! Yes, I nicked that directly from. Josh Jepson? No, it wasn't him, was it? It was, um. Who the hell was it? Hunter, that's the one. The guy he had doing co commentaries. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, um, Mount Montague. I say I found a combination for a safe. <coughs> Plugged it into the only safe I found, and it was wrong. A safe that I had to trek quite a distance, to be quite frank, in order to find. So I was quite annoyed by that. I went off, had some dinner, and I calmed myself down a bit. So it is a game that uh, can be quite frustrating as well. It's not usually because of the puzzles themselves. Once you crack um, the first layer, they usually flow into each other quite nicely. No, the problem is more to do with uh, um, when you find what you think is the solution to the puzzle you're trying to solve and actually turns out to be something related to a puzzle that you haven't even found yet, as was the case uh, here. The combination for the safe I was actually aware of and trying to open was actually on a piece of paper in the desk drawer underneath it. However, items don't always act the same way twice in Mount Montague. Some items you can interact with perfectly in one occasion, then not at all the next time you try. Speaking of which, I should have enough height now, shouldn't I? I should have tried this at fucking hell. I should have tried this earlier. That wasn't even a challenge. That was me being a knob and not thinking through properly. Yeah, standing on the side of the lump of flesh, not going to help. Standing on the top, that allows you early access to this curvy. I'm reasonably certain the doorway over there, see the big metal one? I'm pretty sure you can't actually open that from this side. You have to throw a, uh... I'm not sure if you actually have to throw a switch or you just have to walk through it from that side to actually trigger it properly. I'm pretty sure until you get into that area that door isn't actually loaded properly. I use the word properly too often, haven't I? No, no, whatever. You get the general point I'm trying to make. Uh, actually I'm going to go check though, just to be on the safe side. But yeah, back to Mount Montague. Um, in some cases, like, you won't be able to open all drawers. In some cases, they'll be uh, blocked off by stuff. In other cases, they just won't respond to whatever you're trying to do. What if I get one of these guys to glitch through the door, like I have in some other occasions? Say so with arms coming through. Sometimes, if you get them to stand in the right position, usually, if you get them to take damage while they're doing it, they'll sort of clip through the door. Which. It's not actually as bad a thing as it sounds. It allows you to separate packs of enemies. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get through there, so... 
next area, next area. Um, yeah, there's definitely still some stuff to do in this area, I think. Mm. I'm sure there's at least one. I'm missing something. Oh, that's it, isn't there? Um, yeah, the main room with the coal, of course, of course. I didn't actually go down that one side passage yet, did I? Of course, of course. All I gotta do is remember how to get there. That is gonna be the challenging part. Is it. Was it down this way? Pretty sure it was. Yes, no? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, because, um. There's at least one of the walkways that leads into some of these rooms. Don't think it's. I think that one you have to be able to get. Actually, no, wait. What's it? Is, who is that one? There's definitely one of these yellow rooms that you can get to by using the coals. I know that for a fact. I said, I mean, I remember that vaguely. That's not exactly the same thing. Uh, oh wait, can I, can I repeat my trick from earlier and like jump off this and grab onto the ledge? Maybe. I don't know if you can actually grab railings. I don't. Ah, piss! I was wrong. I don't think you can, but it's worth a try, you know. I phased. Through the wall, interesting. Hmm, no wonder. Can I actually get through the wall properly? Yes, no. Doesn't look like it. I'm sure that... Again, this might... Nah, it's not going to let me, is it? Nah. So many places that you your character sort of clips through the wall, but you, you just can't make it all the way through, you know? It disappoints me. It disappoints me greatly, you know? No, oh, whatever. I mean, if I could figure out the trick to doing it, I could, like, jump straight through these windows and shit. Just get to these areas right off the bat. A lot quicker for all concerned, really. Well, mostly for me. Also for you guys, technically. Possibly. Maybe. But, yes, well, I've lost track of what I was saying entirely, so... Let's just call it a day, shall we? I say call it a day, I'm gonna go... grab a bite to eat in a moment, I think. I think we're getting very, very hungry lately. Must be the winter thing. Old primal instincts and all that bollocks, yeah? But first, I'm definitely going to go and open this gateway system. Now, if I remember correctly, the gates won't open until you've turned them on. Uh, loads of things up there. I'm reasonably certain they won't activate until you've actually used the engineer's key on them, anyhow. No other obvious effect, so for want of a better thing, yeah. yeah. I should have tested them first, actually, shouldn't I? To make sure that they wouldn't open before I did that. Yeah, whatever. Let's just assume that's what I actually did. Even if it's not, it's not like I can't just run around off screen and determine if there's anything I've missed, you know? Speaking of which, excuse me, gentlemen. Again, these very complex opening doors. You think uh, Mr. Ripper been watching a lot of Star Trek or something? In fact, that would be a lot funnier, actually. Just two random mobs of enemies just standing on either side of the doors, pulling them open every time someone walks past. It'd be like the Dreglings in 1-4 um, in Boladarian Palace, wouldn't it? Yeah, you can tell how much Demon Souls I've been playing lately. They even make that reference. Hey there, how's it going? It's been between Demon Souls and using my purpose-made co-op character in uh, Dark Souls. My son, bro. I gotta admit, he's not as useful as I wanted him to be. He's mostly for aesthetics. He's definitely not a guy who can run in there and like solo everything for you know player. Which I suppose is actually a fair trade-off, you know. He's definitely you can definitely provide a lot of support. But he's not going to do it for you. Couldn't do it for you. Well, he probably could, but it'd take me longer than it'd take for you to do it by yourself, kind of thing. Did you take my meaning? I'm not explaining this very well at all, am I? Hmm. Ah. Right, exploration. Exploration is the key. It is always the key. Sometimes it even finds keys, depending on the game. Where the crap am I? 
It's another yellow area, so presumably there will be a dark soul of one description or another. I'm not gonna say it's mobs of enemies go. These guys with their long range attacks are actually the easiest to deal with. Because their default attack is to drop the one knee stationary and fire at you. It's much harder to deal with the enemies um, swarm you for you know manual attacks. Melee even, not manual. Anywho, I think that's enough for one day.